Okay, that song you just heard us do is one called Country Woman, and it was done by some musicians who were associated with a group called Jack Kelly's uh, South Memphis Jug Band. And for this particular song, uh, the, the lead guitar is playing out of open G tuning, what's more commonly referred to as Spanish tuning. Um, and the second guitar is playing out of standard tuning in the key of C. Now, to get open G to sound in the key of C, I'm having to capo to the fifth fret. But what we'll do is just get you in the ballpark without a capo in terms of the tuning. And then uh, I'll put the capo on, you know, I'll tweak it a little bit if it's, if it's not in tune there. And uh, we'll get in tune at the fifth fret because that's where you're going to be to play the song. So here's my open strings. Sixth string, D. Fifth string, G. Fourth string, D. Third string, G. Second string, B. And first string, D. Okay, now let me put the capo on here and see how that transfers. Capos tend to make the bass side sharp a little bit. So here's the pitch of the strings at the fifth fret with the capo on. Sixth string. Fifth. Fourth. Third. Second. And first. Okay, so now um, if we look at this guitar part that I'm playing, uh, and Frank and I were talking about, we're not e exactly certain uh, what musician played which part. Um, various musicians could have been involved. Uh, Jack Kelly seems like he played the part like I'm playing on a lot of his numbers, but there's also Will Batts uh, could have been involved playing the part that Frank is going to teach to you. and. And it also may have been played by Dan Sane, who's best known for playing with uh, Frank Stokes. But in any event, I'm playing in, in a Spanish tuning up here, capo to the fifth fret. And um, we'll focus a bit on the left hand here first. And the song starts with a full solo, a full solo through the form. And uh, it begins with three pickups in, in the treble. And uh, they fall on the end of beat three, beat four, and the end of beat four. And what, what um, the guitarist is doing is he's just worrying this slide into the fifth fret of the first string. And so he'll do that slide for each of those three pickup notes, one and two and three and four and in that first full measure. and then he just does it on the first beat of the second measure. And, and uh, one thing that's interesting about this part is that it doesn't require much uh, explanation of what's happening in the bass. He hits this open fifth string, four to the bar, one, two, three, four, from beginning to end, this guitar part. It doesn't change when chords change. He, he just he droning on that open fifth string. So I'll play this uh, first two measures with the pickup notes. So it's like one, two, three. Okay, so that little rundown was fifth, third, third fret, third string open. Now he gets into what I can sort of consider his signature like for this tune. And it, he is going from that open second string, one, two. And in the right hand there, if we could look at that, 
just for a moment in the right hand. What he's doing in the right hand here is distinctive because he's going one, and on B2, he's continuing to hit that open fifth string, but he's doing a brush stroke toward the treble, which is kind of unusual. And to do that, you kind of have to hold your thumb and index finger sort of in this little pincer movement or position like this, I would say. And if you hold that index pretty firm relative to the thumb, you'll get a nice follow through. Then he does a little partial D seventh. That's the second fret of the third string, the first fret of the second. Another downward bro brush stroke. So I'll do that little bit counting myself in. One, two, three, four. Now then he, he hits three pickup notes once again. This time he's going to brush those top two strings open. And he frets just the first two strings with his index finger at the fifth fret. And that's kind of the extent to which he acknowledges the four chord. So he hits that on the downbeat. One and two and three and four brushes the two again on beat four, then on the and of four, gets this eighth fret. Back to the signature leg. Now, he's in his last little bit here, and, and we'll see what he does in the left hand. He, as the third four bar phrase, he brings that position up so that his index finger is at the third fret of the second string and his second finger is at the fourth fret of the third string. And just very briefly gets that fifth fret of the first string. Moves the position down one fret intact, then lifts it, brushes open, puts it back down, but on the first fret, now to his signature lick. Now it goes right into the verse. That whole pass that I just completed was the opening solo. So now he's going into his verse. He plays the same three pickup notes. And now he gets up here and he's fretting just the first string at the fifth fret. And he's going to be going up to that 8th fret. I use my ring finger because it's got a little more strength for reefing on that string than the little finger does. So it's like 1 and 2 and 3, 4 and 1 and 2, 3 and 4 and signature lick. Now this is going to be just exactly the same except you bar those first two strings at the first, or fifth fret, excuse me. Brush both. Signature leg. This is the same way the, same way the uh, opening uh, solo ended. nice amount of repetition there uh, between the, the verse accompaniment and the opening solo pass. Now, as it goes into the chorus, yet again he plays these pickup notes. Now in those first four bars of the chorus, he gets into a really neat thing with the backup guitarist, because what he's doing is he's working a little three note motif here. And, um, you know, whenever you take a little three-note phrase and you're phrasing it 
against a, a pulse that is four beats per measure, what's going to happen is the phrase is going to flip over on top of itself over and over again so that the notes fall in a different place relative to the pulse. So I'll do it with a count. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Now he goes to his four chord, and he stays at the base of the neck. He's getting this position where you get the first fret of the second string and the second fret of the third string, and he's going one, Open three and four, open one and two, lift three and four, signature lick. Down one fret, lift two. So you can you can see that the you might say that the the means here are are not super complicated, droning the bass, um, lots of repetition of phrases, uh, returning to little three note ideas or taking a simple position, moving it up two frets and down a fret at a time, but the but the overall effect is is real strong, and so. What we'll do now is uh, go to the split screen and I will play through the opening solo, uh, one verse, and the solo that I just explained, the solo pass, and, and Frank will accompany me and we'll do that one together, the split screen version. So we'll go there now. For the second guitar in Country Woman, I'm playing in C in standard tuning. So let's get that in tune so you can play along. Uh, here's your sixth string. One more. Fifth string. Fourth string. Third string, second string, and the first string. Here's that 
first position C chord. The heart of this accompaniment is really in the right hand, so um, it's a strong bass note kind of boom chang accompaniment, basically. Boom chang. So, and there's a couple subdivisions that happen here. So, um, the first basic one is a, a triplet subdivision, so where each beat gets divided up equally into three. So that might be phrased in this way, in the right hand. So... Try that again. So, again, this is all... And I'm playing this all with my thumb, so... Another uh, typical subdivision that happens is, is instead of being subdivided into three, you're subdividing into equal notes, so eighth notes. Again, all play with the thumb. Quarterly, coming back to the left hand, the song is very simple uh, in terms of the chords involved. Just a C, um, an F chord, and a G chord. Uh, other than that, it's all bass runs. So let's take a walk through um, the chords that as they uh, as they progress, and just walk through the accompaniment. So. Um, as John's, John's guitar starts off the, the form, and this guitar follows in kind of on the one. So it starts off with a very simple boom chang accompaniment. A little bass run. And then a change to the G. A little anticipation. So we'll just see that again. It's a very simple accompaniment, starting with the C. So strum. Run up to G. Sorry, run from the G up to the C. And then a change to the G. And that change to the G really mirrors the signature lick that John is playing. Uh, that's kind of the guitar's, this guitar's version of that signature lick. Sometimes it's played with a chord, you'll see later, often over that signature lick, it's played that, play a triplet riff over that. It's a pretty exciting sound. So, um, that being the one chord, there's a change to the four chord, which is very simple. I think of this, this kind of a strumming pattern in the right hand is one down and three up. So what we're going to do is we're going to strum one bass note, and then we're going to strum the chord three times across the treble. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then we're back into the one. Anticipate off the open A string. Okay. I'm sorry, I was going to play the signature lick with a chord, but here typically is what would happen. He would play triplets. So it's kind of an exciting sounding riff. It starts um, in the left hand, if we take a look at it. Um, you start on the first fret of the fourth string, and then move up to the second fret. Open third string. That's one triplet. One. And then another triplet starting from the third fret of the third string and then running down to the second fret and down back to the open string. Another triplet starting on the first fret of the fourth string, second fret and the second fret of the fourth string, and then open third string. And then just the strum on the chord. Actually, it's a bass note strum, and then two treble strums. Let's try that again. So, um, now again in the left hand is a bass run, uh, moving up into the five chord, and it starts on the open, the open four string, goes to the second fret of the four string, the third fret of the four string, ending up on the open third string, followed by a strum on the five chord, which is G. Low bass note. Now here, over there's a there's a run that John's guitar is playing that kind of descends, so something like that. This guitar doesn't quite play mm -hmm. that, but it does. What it does play is this uh, really quick triplet run as that's descending. So while that's coming down, this guitar plays uh, off the the sort of fourth and third strings again, starting on the first fret of the fourth string. <laughs> ending on the C chord. 
Right. Signature lick. Oh, I almost forgot the coolest part of the signature lick. Now this, it, it, so you end on that chord, and you, you end up anticipating this low bass note a little bit, so it's, you're kind of uh, ahead of the beat a little bit. And you play this run that goes from the, the low, the low string, third fret, to the open fifth string, to the third fret of the, of the fifth string, and then first fret of the fourth string, second fret of the fourth string. Chord. Change to the G. Back to C. So let's try playing that the whole way through, just uh, slowly. So strong, bass, strong, run. That's the basic accompaniment. When it comes time for the solo, it's a little bit of a guitar freakout. So uh, he starts by articulating really strict uh, kind of eighth notes. It's a really strong cut time feel, one and two and one and two and, uh, as opposed to the triplet feel that was kind of stated during, uh, in a large part during that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, sorry, the verse. <laughs> so when the solo starts, um, he starts just by really sitting sitting on that C note, so and then runs up to the E flat note, uh, first fret of the four string. Now here's a little a kind of neat little run. So again, starts with that first fret of the uh, of the D string up to the second fret of the D string. He's going to run up to the open third string. Uh, second fret of the third string, back to the open, first fret of the, of the fourth string, the second fret. Concluding with a little run from the f first fret of the uh, first fret of the fourth string to the open to the C. It kind of repeats these those three notes. So. It's the one time in the whole song where I'm actually using my index finger. So let me try that whole little bit here. And you're into the F chord. And same from this point forward, the F chord, you're just strumming chords. That same kind of one down, three up kind of kind of feel. So bass note, strum, strum, strum. Again, run up to the one chord. Little triplet run here. This gets a little fancy in here. So he starts with the same bass note run up from the open four string. Kind of really sits on that open that open third string. And then uh, to the first fret of the of the D string. So oh, first fret of the D string, open to the C note, the third fret of the A string. Open A string, down to the G, and back to C. Sorry, I'm having momentary lapse of memory. That would work there. <laughs> you may or may not have actually played it. There's a couple things that could really work there. One of that's one of them. That's another one that would work. So that's a little hammer from the first fret of the four string to the open to the second fret of the four string. Open G, second fret of the, four, of the G string, back to the open G string, 
little hammer again. So, let's take that to the split screen and play it together with John. <laughs> <laughs> 